here to respond. She is the co-host of the hit show, The Five, Judge Janine Pirro. Judge, all right, let's get your overall take here. <laughs> and we, we also, I know, right? Uh, you can't make this up. <laughs> you can't. All right, now you're making me, you can't yeah. make this up. But you do have one other concept, legal concept, we got to look at, and that's the, the fruit of the poisonous tree here. Would, yeah. Wouldn't this mean that all the evidence gathered by Nathan Wade, uh, don't they have to throw that out? Well, you know, you can certainly make that argument, but remember who the judge is. This is a judge, you'll recall, Sean, that I told you didn't have the uh, spine to hold Fannie Willis in contempt when she started running the courtroom, pointing her finger at him and telling everybody that she wasn't on trial. So this judge, who is two weeks away from his next election and doesn't want to upset any of his constituents, makes a decision that is absurd. If, if Wade is in a situation where he was so dishonest that he lied about the relationship, that they've got to cut him from the case, why isn't Fanny being cut from the case? I mean, that is an absolute bottom line question. This is a case that is mired in scandal and is mired in, and as the judge said, an odor of mendacity, dishonesty, and lies. And for the judge to come out and say, you know, I don't know if this is an actual conflict of interest. We've still got the Georgia Bar, and we've got this state uh, investigative commission, four commissions that can look into this. Judge, you were the one who sat in the evidentiary hearing. You were the one who were supposed to make the decision about what witnesses were lying and what witnesses were telling the truth. And for you to decide that Wade, the boyfriend, he's got to go because he is not capable of telling the truth. He lied about the same thing she lied about, and she confirmed his lies. But he goes and she doesn't. Look, this speech she made at the church, Sean, is enough. That is race baiting. As a DA, I would be canned for making a speech like that, basically saying that a defendant that I'm prosecuting is a racist. And that is enough to get her off. But this judge doesn't have the chutzpah to get him off, to get her off the case, and leaves it up to her. And for anybody who has any doubt, she's not going to leave this case. She could care less that Wade is gone. She got five vacations or six vacations in five months. And the judge said, well, we can't be sure how much money really passed, but there wasn't enough evidence. Judge, I know you're new to this, but your job is to decide the facts, decide the evidence who lied, what the money amount was, and you can't then turn around and say, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. And also, this guy, Terrence Bradley, who's the boyfriend's lawyer, he said in an affidavit they absolutely started the affair before the job. He takes the stand, and what's the word? He was inconsistent. His demeanor was unusual. He was unresponsive. And he said, I couldn't make a conclusion. Judge. You can make a conclusion by drawing in the fact that there is this inconsistency, there is this guilty demeanor, there is this lack of responsiveness to something that's an absolute sworn to statement. But this judge doesn't have the spine. In the end, the people trying this case, Sean, are going to be trying a case that they know is a mess. The two of them lied, and they're trying to try Donald Trump for lying and, and offering false statements. And I got to tell you, you know who wins in this case? The prosecutor. With the boyfriend off the case, that's a win for her. This guy doesn't know his way around a courtroom. He's never even tried yeah. a felony case, let alone a RICO state But case. Judge, let me ask you, because, uh, look, uh, <laughs> friends of mine in Georgia told me this guy, because of the re-election that he's going to be facing soon, that they predicted that he'd split the baby, which is what he pretty much did. But he also poisoned the well against her in an appeal. It's hard to imagine one party created an appearance of conflict but not Willis. Uh, so the logic of the judge and his unwillingness to go the, the full step, uh, mm -hmm. I think it, it's he has set her up now to be out of this case as well. Time will tell if I'm proven right, but I see it that way. What do you well, think? Well, we'll see whether or not, when the appeal takes place, whether the, certainly the case is now delayed. The, the appellate division, or whatever the second level is called in the state of Georgia, has a lot of decisions to make. I think that, in the end, this fact-finding, what little there is, is enough to get her off. No one 
No one can explain why he has to go, but she doesn't when she's the one who benefited from the money. And the money that he made, 650000 Now, I was a DA for 30 years. I was an assistant DA and the elected DA three times. You don't pay anybody $350,000 who's never tried a felony case. This is corrupt from the get-go. All right, Judge Pirro, you can catch her every day, of course, on the five. You never, why are you making me laugh? Because it's, it's actually humorous when you actually Ridiculous. look at the, the ruling. Uh, you can't make, because you can't make this stuff up. You really they can't. Can. It's like out of a, a, a spy novel that, or a judicial novel that you couldn't even make up. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.